Yes! Portal 2 Fast to Furious Tyrese. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of The Completionist. And it's February, which means it's time for our annual month thing. First we had the month of love, then we had the month of sequels, then we had fan appreciation month, and now I am officially dubbing this month, the month of sequels, the sequel. Sequels month refers to games that we already reviewed in a series, and we're gonna continue that series, especially with next week, with the special review we promised you guys a year ago. Back when we did Portal 1, during Geek Week a few years ago, we had a blast solving puzzles and figuring out the lie that was cake. And yet here we are now, ready to give our portal solving skills another chance. Portal 2. I kind of messed things up when it came to the Portal franchise. I started out with Portal 2, then made my way back to Portal 1. So already, I'm well versed in the ways of the co-op portal action. Co-optional action? But Batman! Robotic response. Robotic joke in response to your response. Robotic joke confirmed. Hop, ah, 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 What are we doing? I have no idea. Before we start, make sure you first catch up by watching our review of Portal here! Pause now. Great! All caught up? Let's get back to it. Oh! You know what? There are tons of spoilers that happen all throughout the story, so I'm just gonna throw this up here so you don't have to yell at us later in the comments. Well, I'm sure you still will. Portal 2 is said to take place once again in Aperture Labs, a long time after the events of Portal as well as Half-Life 2. Shell once again wakes up in a very blank room, however this time only does a few exercises, admires some art, and then is told to go back to sleep. By the way, if you want to find out how Shell was saved by a former employee of Aperture, check out the officially released comic called Lab Rat. When she wakes up again, things are falling apart and the system is failing. Shell was in suspended animation for an extended period of time and is now being woken up by the lovable and actually voiced by Stephen Merchant this time personality core named Wheatley. He confirms that the system is falling apart and he can help Shell finally escape Aperture. After finding her lifeless structure, Wheatley then accidentally reanimates the boss and disembodied voice from the first game, Gladys. Presumably, she's pissed and decides to exact her revenge on Shell by once again putting her through life threatening tests. But there is a difference this time around though. She's even nastier than before. Initiating surprise in three, two, one. I made it all up. Surprise. Oh, come on. If it makes you feel any better, they abandoned you at birth. So I very seriously doubt they'd even want to see you. However, this does not last for long, as Wheatley devises a plan to take Gladys down once and for all. He plans to do this by corrupting her core with his own mind. And shortly after doing so, he becomes evil and is now the true villain of the game. Shell and Gladys, in potato version, are dropped down to the lowest levels of Aperture Science. So, how are you holding up? Because I'm a potato. Gladys is stolen by a bird, but we'll catch up with her later. Hawk! We now find ourselves in the oldest parts of Aperture Labs, when the science facility was gaining prestige. We are then introduced to the voice of Aperture's founder, Cave Johnson. If you thought that listening to Wheatley and Gladys was a riot, Cave Johnson is voiced by the man, the myth himself, J.K. Simmons. This first test involves something the lab boys call repulsion gel. You're not part of the control group, by the way. You get the gel. Last poor son of a gun got blue paint. <laughs> All joking aside, that did happen. Broke every bone in his legs. Tragic, but informative. Or so I'm told. He now instructs Shell through the old experiments and decades of Aperture's former glory. We follow Cave Johnson's descent into madness as his company starts to lose its luster and he is stricken ill by the moon dust in one of the experimental gels. We'll talk more about the gels in the gameplay section. Johnson's efforts are now directed toward a mind-to-computer transfer experiment with his assistant Caroline. It is deduced that this experiment eventually created Gladys. Now it's time to get back to the modern labs and kick some British merchant butt. If you've played a Valve game before, you'll know exactly how this game looks. 
They have a very clean, polished style, and this is no exception. When it was released in 2011, it really blew me away. Clean graphics ran smoothly on PC and next-gen consoles. Speaking of the console version, I got a little story. There was a little loophole that I found accidentally. If you bought it for PS3, you also got a Steam code for the PC version. So I downloaded my game, didn't have much time to play it on the console, and returned my copy when a new game I wanted came out for store credit. When I got home, I thought, hold on a second, and I checked my Steam library, and sure enough, there it was, my free copy of Portal 2 I already redeemed. I didn't try to do this, and I don't urge anyone to try, but I thought it was notable. Alright, accidental genius thief guy. Graphically, the game has been improved greatly over Portal. The sections that are overgrown, dilapidated, and falling apart bring a realism that was not apparent in the exclusive, clean lab atmosphere of the first game. Sure, we saw some behind the scenes before, but never like this. The sheer scope and size of the lab becomes clear in this game. The decades-old portions of the lab very accurately depicted the 1950s to pre-portal atmosphere. One of the details that really caught my eye was how the logo also changed with the decades. The sound design is on par with the first game. Music is tech-based and swells when action or speed rises. The voice actors that were already mentioned are brilliant, and Ellen McLean reprised her role as Gladys and the Turrets. The oft-forgotten announcer role was done by Joe Michaels. None other than Nolan North was actually the voice of pretty much every defective robot, and I nearly lost it when I found this out. The voices of the co-op robots Atlas and Peabody were done by D. Bradley Baker, the voice of Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh hey, that's pretty cool! It must be mentioned, Greg, that where would these great voice actors be without some amazing writing? And the three dudes who wrote it, Eric Wolpaw, Jay Pinkerton, and Chet Falazek, did a phenomenal job creating a narrative for what could be a very generic puzzle game. Now, there's not much more to be said here about the gameplay. For the most part, it's exactly the same as the first game, with a few additions. Once again, you use the portal gun to fire a blue and orange portal and pass through them. Very simple. The complexity comes from the puzzles that you are required to solve with it. You'll be bending physics like a champ after just a few puzzles. Of course, there are a few robot turrets and general death hazards from the first game. Remember, if you're falling towards the ground, fear not. Shell is still wearing her safe fall boots. Good work, boots. Now here is where we get a bit more variety in gameplay. When you fall down into the old labs, you'll find that Aperture started experimenting with gels in the early days. There's the blue gel, which lets you jump really high, the orange gel, which makes you run very fast, and later on you get the white gel, which lets you place portals on it. The combinations of the three make for some pretty interesting platforming. It makes the closed-in lab rat feel turn into a more open-ended free-form roam, especially when you get the white gel. Just remember, it's poisonous! Do you know who I am? I'm the man who's gonna burn your house down with the lemons! I'm gonna get my engineers to invent a combustible lemon that burns your house down! <laughs> There's only really one other aspect of gameplay that needs to be discussed, and it's a great one. Portal 2 introduced the very fun and successful co-op mode. This puts you and a friend in control of the robots Atlas and Peabody. Together, you are in charge of two portal guns and four portals, multiplying the puzzle possibilities greatly. Gladys is there conducting the experiments, and at the end of each level, you are both destroyed. Here's a mini-spoiler, but at the end of the co-op campaign, Atlas and Peabody find and open the Lost Test Subject Vault, filled with humans in suspended animation. She then destroys you both, because killing humans is way more fun to her. What a sweetheart! Is it weird to be attracted to a deadly computer? I don't think so. As Portal 2 aged, the developers released a few more things to keep it fresh. You've got your run-of-the-mill DLC maps, which are of course a ton of fun, and you've got the ability to customize both Atlas and Peabody, providing that you buy the different pieces. But the biggest addition is your ability to create your own portal puzzles. While I'm not very good at creating levels, it's another feature that will only strengthen your love for the franchise. So you fall into the bottom and made your way back to the top by using the portal gun, gels, and Cave Johnson's encouragement. When life gives you lemons, don't 
Don't make lemonade. Yeah. Make life. Take the lemons back. Yeah. Get mad. Yeah. I don't want your damn lemons. What am I supposed to do with these? Yeah, take the lemons. Demand to see life's manager. Yeah. Make life rule the day and thought it could give Kane Johnson lemons. Wheatley has been slowly destroying the entire lab and the meltdown of Aperture's nuclear cores is imminent. Of course, Super Wheatley is there and waiting for your arrival with some nasty traps to kill Shell once and for all. It becomes a showdown akin to the final fight in Portal, with Wheatley saying he's learned from Gladys' mistakes. You must once again use everything you've learned thus far to stun him and attach corrupted cores to him to cause the system to reject Wheatley and sub Gladys back in. Just after you attach the final core and hit the transfer button, a bomb explodes and sends you back into the main room. Shell survives the blast as the ceiling starts to collapse due to the meltdown. Just as the moon is revealed in the ceiling, you are given the option to fire a portal at it. After you do, Wheatley, the corrupted cores, and Shell are sucked into space. Gladys saves you, and Wheatley is shot out into the galaxy. While they're out there, they might want to visit the freshly finished space resort! In space. Shell wakes up with Atlas and Peabody in front of her, presumably to take over her job, and Gladys explains that it was the remaining human emotion files from Caroline that made her save Shell. GLaDOS swiftly deletes those files and decides it's finally time to release you. As you ride in the elevator, you come to... Singing turrets! They give you a joyous send-off as you ride through the floors to the surface level. The door opens, you exit, turn around, and the scorched companion cube from the previous game is thrown out the door as it slams shut. Once again, there is no completion bonus for beating the game. However, we do get another lovely gift for reaching the end. Just like in Portal, we are given the audio treat of hearing Gladys sing, this time a song called Want You Gone. After the song is over, Wheatley is shown floating in space with one of the corrupted cores orbiting him. He explains how if he could take it all back, he would, and how he is sorry about the whole mad with power thing. The most appropriate ending to a fulfilling, puzzling journey. Puzzling? I see what you did there. Yeah, we're both in space. space. Portal 2 is just as challenging as Portal 1, and yet somehow it doesn't get stale. The story is much more fulfilling and narratively way more sound than the original. To me, the co-op is a better experience. Of course, with newer games, we've got achievements, and the Portal 2 achievements are a blast. None are too difficult, but there's a lot of dumb and novelty-type tasks that are a ton of fun to do. Shout out to my partner in crime, Dev2000, who not only carried me through the co-op, but gave me a lot of tips and speedrun strats for some of these achievements. <sighs> I love this game. When it comes to Portal 2, the game does everything better while staying true to itself. I'd say that the only thing that I didn't like about Portal 2 is the end song. Still Alive is much more iconic and better in my opinion. Other than that, it's a fantastic experience that can keep you engaged for many hours. And while you don't get anything for completing the game, the story in conjunction with the co-op campaign provides so much fun and longevity. With that in mind guys, this game gets our completionist rating of... Complete It. Complete it! And after you complete it, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out our top 10 Genesis games by giving it a click on the left. And if you're looking for some more breaking news coverage that you didn't know you'd need, check out our news channel, Super Scope Show, by clicking on the right. Once again, it's Friday, and there's a fresh Spotify playlist waiting for you at thatonevideogamer.com. Now back to you, Gerard! That's all the time we've got for today, guys, so please, as always, leave your thoughts somewhere on the internet today about the episode, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, our completionist, all that great stuff, and be sure to check out our official That One Video Gamer podcast, which is hosted by Super Bunny Hop and Sunder Gamer on ThatOneVideoGamer.com. Link for that in the description below. Now, if you excuse me, I think I'm just going to listen to that lemon speech all day. It's It's great. Great. With the lemons! With the lemons! Burn the house down. Alright, I've been thinking. When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Make life take the lemons back. Get mad! I don't want your damn lemons! What am I supposed to do with these? Demand to see life's manager! 
Make life through the day and thought it could give Cave Johnson lemons. Do you know who I am? I'm the man who's gonna burn your house down with the lemons. I'm gonna get my engineers to invent a combustible lemon that burns your house down. <laughs> We had a blast figuring out that the lie was a cake. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's called out learning how to read, folks. <laughs> I went to school. Cake. Just censor that part out, Mark. <laughs> no, that's it.